Good afternoon. Thank you, Sarah. You know, when Sarah called me and said, would you speak at this conference? I thought, well, sure, I'll speak. And then I got thinking, why me? Why am I here? So it forced me to take a look at my life. I had a wonderful childhood. I have great parents. I have a sister who's still my best friend. I'm now married. I have three very handsome boys, a husband who adores me, and I have my job, uh, my, my dream job. I'm a judge. What more could I want? These are qualities that make me a leader, right? But then I realized, I'm not here to talk to you because of where I am now. I'm here to talk to you because of where I was. I was 29 years old. I had an incredibly powerful job. I was an assistant United States attorney, a federal prosecutor. And what I did was I prosecuted drug dealers throughout the country. I prosecuted health care fraud. I prosecuted white collar crime. I owned a home. I had an infant and a two year old. And I had a handsome, smart husband who was a drug addict. This is a part of my life I don't share with many people. My outside persona was a prosecutor. I was strong. I put away bad guys. That's what I did. And yet I had this secret that I didn't want anybody to know. It took everything in me to keep up my public persona, to be that strong woman, to hold my family together, to take care of my children. My electricity was turned off. My phone was turned off. I was behind in my mortgage. But I loved my husband. I didn't, I was paralyzed. Because I was not going to be that woman that got divorced. I had babies. So I took small steps. And one of the things I did was I started going to meetings. If you've heard of Al-Anon meetings, Alcoholic Anonymous meetings, Narcotics Anonymous, there I was, the little prosecutor girl in my suit going down to the basement of a church to a Narcotics Anonymous meeting because I needed to learn about this. Of course, I didn't want anybody to know what the other side of my life was doing. And I listened. And this was the only place where I could really be honest about what was going on in my life. And I would tell my story. And there was a woman there who was also married to a drug addict. She herself was a drug addict. And she had very little. And after several meetings, all of a sudden, she looked at me. And she said, how dare you? How dare you tell me that you can't get out of this situation? You have an education. You have the means to get out of this. Look at me. I don't. I felt as if I had been slapped across the face. I was embarrassed. I was humiliated. I was stunned. It took this woman, a drug addict herself, to see in me something that I was not able to see in me. I had a choice. I could get out of my situation. Whatever it was that paralyzed me, it didn't have to do that. I was at a crossroads. <clears throat> I venture to guess that each one of the speakers here today had a crossroads, whether they've told you about it or not. They've had crises. They've had adversity in their life. And they got to that crossroad, and they made a decision that they were not going to be a victim, that they were going to rise above it. 
These were my crossroads. You know, adversity is one of those things that really makes a difference between somebody who's great and somebody who's just mediocre. Because it's not what happens to you that creates your destiny, that defines you. It's what's inside of you and what you choose to do when you're faced with that adversity that creates who you are. We all have choices in life. And that's when it comes down to, what do I do? And when I realized that I had the power to make that choice, I had the strength and power to do it. It was then that I could make the decision to get out of my hole, to rise above it. And I got the strength that I didn't know I had to move on with my life. You know, there's two things that we do to ourselves when we're faced with adversity that we can't do. And one of them is use that word I just used, can't. When we use can't, we limit ourselves. You can say, I won't do it. I don't feel like doing it. I choose not to do it. But the minute we use the word can't, we take away that free will. We take away choice. And then you're stuck. Because when I realized I had the choice of whether I stayed in that marriage or not, then I was able to make the decision to pull myself out of it. And I got the inner strength. I found my passion at that point in time that I would never be held down by another person again. That it was my choice to do that. Now the second thing that we do in these situations is we tend to put barriers around ourselves that are artificial. Say you're up for a very important job promotion. And we all have insecurities. So instead of putting our name in for that job promotion, we decide not to put our name in for it. Because we're protecting ourselves. We're protecting our self-esteem, our pride. But what we're really doing is limiting ourselves. So I ask myself all the time, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? If you really think about that, what would you do if you knew you wouldn't fail? That's how you find your passion. Because it's that one thing, when you ask yourself that question, there's your passion. If you knew you couldn't fail, you'd go and do it. So we need to stop, by, by taking your name out of that list of people to get that big promotion, what you're saying is, I chose not to have it. Not that somebody turned me down but you're not challenging yourself. And you don't know the limits until you challenge yourself. So I challenge each of you here today to ask yourself that question. What would I do if I knew I wouldn't fail? And then to take that, seize that, because that's your passion, and follow through with it. Don't let a single soul put barriers up around you. And don't you put any of those self-imposed barriers around you, because there is greatness there for each of you once you find that passion and you follow through with it. So choose not to be the victim, but to be the victor. Thank you. <laughs>